Hi, everyone, and welcome to my FOSDEM talk about Learn 8-Bit Machine Language with the Toy CPU Emulator. It's an emulator in the style of the Altair 8800 or the MSI uh, 8080. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen so we can all see my slides together. And so here we are. So let me go ahead and first introduce myself. My name is uh, Jim Hall. And I am from the FreeDOS project, as well as a number of other free, uh, open source software projects. Uh, if you'd like to reach out to me after the conference, there's my email address on the screen at jhall at freedos.org. I'm going to be talking about the toy CPU, and you can reach that at uh, my GitHub, and that's at github.com slash FreeDOS project slash toy CPU. Now, this project is uh, something that uh, I used in a class that I teach. To kind of back up a little bit, among other things, I also uh, do instruction of university courses part-time. And one of the courses that I like to teach is this class, MIS 100, Fundamentals of Information Technology in Organizations. That's at Metropolitan State University. Uh, it's located near to me in St. Paul, uh, Minnesota. That's where I live. And this course is uh, not meant for computer science students. This is really an introduction. I would describe it as sort of an introduction to technology uh, for people who are going into our uh, college of management or basically any kind of management uh, major. Uh, these are not meant to be uh, people who are gonna be computer programmers or engineers of any kind. They're gonna be project managers and uh, directors and things like that uh, later on in their career. The goal of the course is really twofold. One is to kind of teach them some tools, like for example, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, things like that. But also it's to build a basic understanding of how technology works, because really everything that we do uh, in, in business today and in our personal lives requires technology. So it's important if you're going to be decision makers in an organization, you really should understand how that technology works, even at some sort of a basic level. Again, I'm not teaching them about computer programming per se, and I'm not teaching them, you know, how to build a computer, but they do need to understand at a high level how all that stuff works. My goal in this class is to basically remove the mystery around how technology works. So uh, it's not just you press a button and magic happens on the back end, but they should have some understanding of what's happening in the back end uh, to make different things happen. Now, part of this class in terms of the outcomes uh, is, well, and certainly a number of things they are going to be understanding some operating systems. You can see up here about computer security, uh, but also a little bit of programming. Now, as I said, we're, we're not teaching them how to be computer programmers. We're not going to expect them to come out of this and know how to program in C or Java or something. But again, they do need to understand how that stuff works on the back end. I don't want them to think as they graduate uh, this course and as they uh, graduate uh, the university, I don't want them to think about you know com computer programming as some sort of a magical thing that they don't completely understand. They need to have some general idea about what's happening. Now, this course is kind of similar to another course uh, that Brian Kernahan teaches. And I kind of wanted to do something that he does in his course, which is basically uh, teaching the students about uh, how computer programming works on a very simple CPU, something that would be very common for a CPU in the 1960s, maybe the 1970s, where basically you have a series of very simple instructions and the computer has an accumulator and you can manipulate values in the accumulator to make the program do different things. And in his course, uh, and I've interviewed Brian a couple of times, which is why I know about it. And so uh, uh, in his course, he uses, he wrote this toy machine uh, simulator. And as you can see, it's sort of similar to assembly. And so the program I've got up on screen would uh, add two numbers together. It loads the value of one into the accumulator, and then it adds the value of two to what's in the accumulator. And that, of course, will result in the value of three. It then will uh, store the value that's in the accumulator into a variable called sum. You can see that that is stored after the uh, rest of the program instructions are done. And then it prints the value to this output device that he has defined. And so that's why you can see three on the first line on the output side, on the right-hand side of the, uh, of the simulator. And then the program stops. So it does the stop instruction, and now the program 
is done. And of course, when it's done, you can see the output for three. And of course, it says stop. And the accumulator, of course, also has the value of three because that's what it had when the computer was done running. And I thought this was a really interesting way to uh, teach kids about uh, programming at sort of a high level. But I like to also talk a lot about computer history in my class. And so I'll do a lot of uh, lectures where we kind of talk about how technology got from, you know, let's say A to B. Uh, for example, the first week in the course, we start talking about uh, things like the ENIAC and the Colossus. And we walk our way all the way up through uh, different eras in computing to today. And so I kind of like to back things up a little bit and kind of start with how did people use to program computers in a much earlier era? Now, I, I wanted to kind of borrow what Brian had done in his toy machine simulator, but I wanted to take it in a different direction. And so I used this as a starting point to create my own toy machine simulator, and I call that the toy uh, CPU. Now, where did I go with this? Well, actually, I wanted to do something that was a little bit um, sort of old school and uh, to kind of really get the kids to understand how programming worked in sort of a switches and lights model. As I said earlier in the semester, in our very first week, we, we talked with the students. I talked with the students about, uh, you know, the, the history of computing. And, you know, when they see the pictures of uh, older computers that had switches and lights on the front panel, and, and that's how you program the computer, they, they okay oh well, they, they say well okay I I, I under I guess I understand that that they they use switches and lights but I don't really know how that works and so I'm like well let's let's talk about that and so I I then talked about the uh, you know this Altair 8800 which is what you're seeing up on screen which definitely used a uh, switches and lights model but how do you actually program that? Well, I didn't want to actually use an Altair 8800. Then my, in my class, I figured that was that was way too way too much in terms of uh, overkill. Uh, I really wanted to have something very simple that the students could uh, sort of see just the very bare minimum of how things worked. And so I combined this concept of an Altair 8800-like machine with what Brian Carnahan had made for his uh, toy machine simulator. And that's where I came up with the idea of uh, the toy uh, CPU simulator. And so it's meant to be sort of in the style of the uh, the Altair 8800 uh, or the MSI 8080, uh, basically where you have a series of switches and uh, lights, and the lights will indicate in binary what's going on. Now, binary might seem to you like, well, if you're not teaching them programming, why are you teaching them binary? Well, I actually in that class do teach these students how binary works because binary ends up getting used uh, in a lot of different concepts and technology. Again, they're not doing a whole bunch of stuff with it. They're not like, you know, doing ads and subtracts and binary, but uh, and they're not doing like binary operations, but they do need to understand how binary works because we talk about it in networking and things like that. So going with a toy CPU simulator that used binary is actually in keeping with some of the other things that we do uh, in the class. And so what you're seeing here on screen is the uh, simplest sort of interface I could come up with for the toy uh, CPU simulator. Uh, you're seeing the counter and that's in the upper left. And that's a series of eight, uh, what are meant to be LEDs. And that's going to show uh, an eight bit or a, a one byte uh, value. And that's the counter in the program memory. I'll talk about that in a second. Now for each counter, you're going to have an instruction in memory. And so on the right hand side, on the same line as the counter, you can see the instruction that's stored at that counter memory address. And so again, it's going to be uh, an eight bit or one byte uh, value, although we don't actually have uh, that, num that, that, that many instructions for the toy CPU. I'll talk about the instructions in just a second too. Now, as the uh, computer runs, it's going to have a very simple operation model where it's going to have an, a single accumulator. And then you can put values into the accumulator. You can copy values out of the accumulator. You can operate on the accumulator and things like that. And so I need to be able to show what the accumulator looks like. And so that's what I've got there in the middle on the right-hand side is the actual accumulator itself. Now, the accumulator can hold 
uh, from values from zero to 255. So those 256 uh, numbers. And of course it's binary. So it's, uh, it's eight bits, it's one byte. And on the bottom line, uh, I also uh, made a status that kind of shows what the uh, toy CPU is doing. And so you can see uh, what this is showing is that the system is powered on. So you can see PWR power uh, on the right hand side. It's also in input mode It's waiting for the user to actually do something. And so it's an in input mode. Uh, as you go to different modes in the uh, in the toy, it'll go into edit mode. And so we'll light up the light uh, for edit. When you run the program, the runs the run. Uh, and then if anything needs to happen, you know, in terms of aborting or having an error or hitting a halt, uh, things like that, we actually will light up those lights as well. And actually when the, when the toy CPU boots up, I wanted to be able to show that it's initializing, it's zeroing the memory. And so when we actually look at the toy CPU in a little bit, uh, you'll actually see the initialization light, the INI uh, light will light up. And so we'll see power and INI uh, lit up as it runs through memory and zeros everything out. Now the counter is eight bits, it's one byte. That means it can store values from zero to 255. And so uh, this toy CPU has uh, that much memory. It's capable of storing uh, 256 bytes. And that's gonna be combined or shared with program instructions as well as memory values in the program. Now, in terms of the instructions, it's definitely a minimal instruction set computer. Uh, and you can see right there on the screen uh, on the lower left of that black rectangle, uh, I've got what looks like or what's meant to look like uh, a, a piece of paper that's been taped <laughs> to the front of the machine. And so that is showing you the different operations that this uh, toy CPU is capable of doing. And it's it's meant to represent the binary instruction for each one of those. And so uh, it, you know, stop, and that'll obviously stop the machine or stop the program from running. That's basically the end of your program. And uh, that's all zeros. And I did all zeros because when the machine boots up, it zeros out all the memory. And then if you were to run the program right away, at least it would just immediately stop. So it was sort of a safe way of, uh, of stopping the, the system. And then you can operate on the binary values in the uh, accumulator. And you can see that the, the values are uh, one and two or uh, binary one and two. Uh, and that is, uh, you know, the uh, seven zeros and a, and a one or six zeros, a one and a zero. What that's meant to represent sort of visually is that the, the bit in those last two places is either on the right-hand side or the left-hand side. And that'll shift the, uh, the, the register the, in the accumulator, all the bits to the right or to the left. And so it's a, it's a way to just do a binary shift. Now it's not a rotate, it's actually a, a shift. And so if you have the binary value of one uh, and you shift to the right, it'll only shift by the way, uh, right and left by one value. So if you wanna shift multiple times, you just need to call it shift. Uh, you know, right, right and left shift uh, multiple times. And so if you have a, a binary value of one in the accumulator and you do a right, it'll actually give you a zero. And so you need to be careful that this is not actually a rotate. This really is a shift like you get in, uh, in C programming. And then not is visually meant to represent in the instruction lights uh, as four lights off and four lights on. It's meant to represent that this is flipping the values that are in the accumulator. And then there's the instruction for and, which is actually just one, uh, actually two plus the uh, uh, plus not. And so that allows us to have a value here that, that does an and of what's in the accumulator with some other value, a register value, a value that's stored somewhere uh, in memory. We can also do a binary or same thing uh, with some other value that's in memory. And actually, by the way, I want you to notice I picked the, these binary instructions very carefully. Uh, you'll notice that the fourth bit in, if it's been, if it's been turned on for that instruction, that means that the next, uh, it, it takes, it takes a, a, an argument. It takes the next value uh, in the program instructions will be the, uh, the, the actual uh, value that it needs to operate with. So, or is going to, or what's in the accumulator with some other value in memory. And so that's why the third bit in or fourth bit in is, uh, is, is turned on.
I can also do an exclusive or, uh, and of course I can also do uh, things like very important. I need to be able to load a value into memory so I can start working on it. And if I can load a value into memory, I probably should be able to save a value somewhere back into memory. And so I can save a copy or store uh, something that's in the accumulator into some uh, part of my memory. And of course I can add uh, to the accumulator some value that's uh, previously stored in memory. And so I can also subtract from the accumulator some, some value that's uh, already stored in memory. And then you need to have flow control of some kind. And so I have a go-to instruction in here where it'll actually jump to uh, some counter instruction somewhere in memory, somewhere else. And it can also do a conditional jump. So it's called if zero. And so if the accumulator is zero, then it will jump somewhere in memory. And so if you want to do a comparison on something, for example, you need to do uh, some binary operations for like an XOR uh, to see if you get uh, zero and you can jump uh, somewhere else in memory based on that. So it's, it's, it really is meant to be a very minimal instruction uh, set for the toy CPU. Now I found I also had to have a null operation, a NOP, and uh, because Sometimes it's just helpful to just take out an instruction when you're debugging something. Uh, and actually the way that the program works is if it doesn't recognize uh, an instruction that you've given it, that's the same as a NOP. It's the same as, as saying, I'm just gonna ignore this instruction. But remember I said that the fourth bit in, if that bit has been turned on, that, in, that tells the toy CPU that the next value, the next, uh, the next counter uh, has something it needs to load, uh, uh, use. And so uh, if you actually gave it a, uh, an instruction that was just uh, three zeros, a one, and then uh, four zeros, then what that would do is that would, uh, that would still be recognized as a not because there's nothing that looks like that. Uh, but at the same time, we'll have a side effect of actually skipping the next instruction in memory. Uh, don't rely on that because maybe a future version of the toy CPU will get rid of that. But, uh, but that's actually what happens. So the safe, guaranteed safe way to do a, a NOP instruction is to actually use the one uh, followed by seven zeros. Now, uh, why would I create the toy CPU to begin with? By the way, I probably should talk about that. Why do I create the toy CPU as opposed to going finding something else? Well, as I said, I can go and find like a uh, an Altair 8800, uh, you know, simulator. There are they they exist, and I could have just used one of those. But that's that's a lot of overhead for my students. I didn't want them necessarily like have to learn all of the instructions that are there in the uh, in the Intel instruction set. That just seemed like a lot for them to have to tackle. Um, there is actually another minimal instruction set computer called the, the what's it called? The DigiRule uh, that I really liked. It's, I think it's about $40 uh, and it's a, it's a kit you can buy on, on, on some guy's website, uh, but it actually is out of stock. Uh, it looks like it's uh, it's sold out and then he hasn't made any more. So um, I, uh, I would have bought one of those, uh, but it wasn't available. So I had to build my own. So uh, that's why I made the toy uh, CPU. And so looking at the instruction set, this is what I was talking about here. You can stop, uh, you can move things to the bits to the right and left by one, uh, these different instructions. And it's always meant to be represented by that little card uh, that's kind of taped to the front of the toy CPU. Well, uh, let's actually look at how you might uh, build a program for this. And this is where we actually get to explore the toy CPU. So if you want to download the toy CPU and, and run it, there's a version, by the way, on, the, on, on my GitHub uh, that is a binary for DOS. And since I have a free DOS background, obviously, uh, that's why I wrote it for that. Uh, there is an old uh, working prototype also for DOS version one that... Um, it doesn't actually let you input a program. It was just sort of meant to sort of an experiment to see what I could do with it. Uh, version two was a Linux uh, program that uses N curses. And if you want to run the program uh, on a Linux machine, you can download the source code uh, from a GitHub that uh, and grab the, uh, the the source code for version two. There's a release for version two, uh, and you can compile that with N curses, and that will that will work fine. Uh, but it was also kind of meant as a prototype. It's not very nice looking. This version, the DOS version, is the one I really wanted to use. And so that's that's what we're going to be using here. Now, let's look at this one. So I, I find that before 
I write a program on the toy CPU. It's helped to kind of, it helps to kind of write everything down on like a little piece of paper. So that's what I'm showing here in the left-hand side is what it might look like if we're gonna write everything down on a piece of paper. And so if I wanna blink all of the lights on the accumulator, uh, I'm not talking about like, you know, like each light individually to light it all up, although you could do that. Uh, I'm just gonna do the very simple example here of I'm gonna light up all the right-hand side, the four right-hand side lights. And I'm going to light up then the left-hand side lights. And then I'm going to light all of them up together. And then the program will be done. And so that's what we're going to do. So we're going to write a very simple program to do this. Now, you'll notice, by the way, when we, when we eventually get to run this, that the, uh, 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 the toy CPU has a very long delay. And that's meant so you can actually watch the system uh, run now. Let me actually bring up my uh, the actual toy CPU. So here's here's the toy CPU, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and run the toy. Let me before so actually before we write a program, let's actually look at the toy CPU itself. So I hit return on toy, and this is the toy CPU. Now I mentioned it's going to initialize the memory, and so it's basically going to wander through from zero to 255 and set each instruction to zero. And that's what you saw at the beginning. Let me actually quit. You can actually uh, watch, by the way, you, the light uh, go over to uh, halt. But uh, let me just rerun that again. So let me just do toy. And you can see it go, the counter is going up from zero to 255. And as it does that, it's setting each instruction uh, to zero. The accumulator was already initialized to zero when the program starts up. And so here I am in input mode. And uh, of course the system is on. So the, the power light is lit up and the input light is also lit up. And so I can see here, I've got the little card left-hand side. Uh, it's giving me the instructions for uh, what I can do inside the toy CPU. Now, uh, just to kind of wander through the interface a little bit here, uh, this is uh, in input mode right now. And so on the bottom of the screen, you can see the hints for how you can use input mode. Input mode, the up and down arrows will allow to move between the counters. And so I'm gonna use the up and down arrows on my, on my keyboard. So if I go down one, uh, so basically you can imagine the top uh, uh, being zero and then everything after that. So basically we're trying to read instructions from one line to the next. It kind of made sense for me to do it that way. So that way we go down to go to the next instruction and up to go to the previous instruction because when you write it down on a piece of paper, that's how you're going to write it. And so this is counter instruction zero, but we can see that the instruction itself is, I'm sorry, the counter one. Uh, so this is the, uh, the, the uh, basically the second line in the program, but the instruction is zero. If I go down again, you can see I'm now I'm instruction uh, counter uh, two. The instruction itself is also zero. So it's basically a stop command and the same thing. There's three, there's four, uh, there's five, there's six. Uh, and so if I go all the way back up to uh, zero, you can see that the, the system is uh, has, has a stop instruction. Everything has been zeroed out. And so if I hit R, you can see down there on input mode, uh, enter will allow me to edit it. We'll look at that in a second, but R will actually run uh, the program that I have in memory. And as I said, I, I zero everything out. And as you can see on that little piece of paper on the front of the toy CPU, uh, all zeros means that the computer is going to just stop running the program. And that's a safe way to do it. So I'm gonna hit R on my keyboard and it's gonna run the program. You can see it will go to the run uh, status and with those lights in the bottom, uh, nothing happened. And the, the, because the first uh, instruction, the counter zero had an instruction of stop, which means that it immediately stopped the program. It also took a while. Every instruction has a delay built into it. So that way you can actually watch the CPU running. And that way, as I run the program, I can actually explain to my students or remind them about what's happening. Uh, and they can kind of match what's happening on, you know, with the program they wrote down, uh, see it actually execute on the toy CPU itself. I'm just going to run it one more time. You can actually watch the status in the lower right hand corner is going to go from this input mode to run. But of course, nothing's going to happen because uh, the program is immediately going to do uh, a stop instruction counter zero. So I'll do R right now. There it is. It's running, but it's got nothing to do. And so it immediately stops. And so we've actually moved pretty far, actually. This is, some, this is something that um, my students uh, learned how to, how to see is that the, the computer is actually doing something. It's immediately stopping, but it's immediately doing something.
Uh, so let's actually write a program. So this is the program that I showed my students about how computers work, how programming actually works in sort of this uh, switches and lights model. And so the goal was that I would, uh, you know, show them how to write a program. And then we would write a program. I would challenge them to write some programs and we would input it into the toy CPU and watch it run. So the first one's a very simple program. We're going to blink all of those lights on the accumulator. We're going to light, light up the lights on the right-hand side of the accumulator. And we're going to light up the lights on the left-hand side of the accumulator. And we're going to light them all up. And then we're going to stop. And so that's what we're doing here. We're just basically a series of load instructions. We're going to load the right, we're going to load the left, and we're going to load them all, and then we're going to stop. And so the way that I do that, if I bring up my uh, my little hint sheet, uh, and so if I uh, were to um, uh, look here at the next slide, you can see that uh, using my little hint sheet there in the middle, I can now create an instruction set to put into memory. So instruction zero is going to be the load command. And that's what that binary uh, looks like. So it's uh, zero, 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 one, zero, one, zero, zero, right? So if you look on the, uh, the card in the middle, you can see that that's what the load instruction is. And then uh, we need to load from the right-hand side. Well, as I write my instructions, I can write all of my instructions uh, from zero to six. That's the actual program instructions. And any memory after that, uh, from seven all the way up to 255, I can use for program memory. It just happens to be this easiest for your program memory that you're going to be using to be right after the stop instruction. And so this program is actually 10 bytes long from zero to nine. So uh, I'm going to load from memory location seven because seven is the first instruction after I'm done with the program. Uh, and uh, then I'm going to load from memory location eight because eight is the next one. And then I'm going to load from memory location nine. And then I'm going to stop. And you can see that memory location seven has all the lights lit up on the right hand side. Uh, of the accumulator and then left will uh, number location eight will load up all the lights on the left hand side and then memory location nine is going to load up all of the uh, lights on the accumulator it's going to be two value 255. So if I were to bring my uh, my virtual box in here let's actually write this program and so uh, here I am I'm going to write a, a program so I'm in uh, input mode and that means I can use the up and down arrows, right? So I can do up and down. Uh, that's instruction one. Here we are back at zero, right? I can do one, two, three, right? But going back up here to zero. So there's zero. So for zero, I want to have the load instruction. And so I'm going to hit return. So on the bottom of the screen, you can see a little hint. It says input mode and up, down for counter, and then enter to edit. And that'll allow me to edit the instruction at counter zero. And so if I hit enter, you can see that now I get, uh, first of all, the, the, the lights on the bottom indicate that I'm in now in edit mode. And then I get a little underline uh, under each light that I can turn on and off. And so now I'm in edit mode. And so the little hint on the very bottom of the screen says edit mode. I'm going to use left and right to change what bit I'm looking at. And we use space to flip the bit. And then when I'm done doing editing, uh, I can just do enter and that'll put me back into edit mode. That's oh, right, input mode. And so I want to do a load. And so here I can, you can use my, my arrows, right and left. We'll move the arrow or the, the indicator uh, right and left. But I want to uh, set the load instruction. So you can see the hint over there, or the little program I've got written out, uh, the load instruction. And of course I could use a little uh, sheet of paper that's tacked to the front of the, uh, the toy CPU, but the load instruction is, uh, I need to turn that on and that on. And that should be the load instruction, right? So to compare that with what I've got uh, on, my, uh, on my screen over here, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. That's the load instruction. So uh, now I've got that set, so I can hit return. And that has now set the uh, load instruction. Now I want to load from memory location seven. So I want to go down one. And so there's counter number one. And so now I want to uh, load from memory location seven. So I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to go and set uh, the instruction of seven. This is going to say you load from memory location seven. So it does the load instruction first and then it has to say, well, it's going to load from somewhere. So the next instruction in memory tells it where to load the memory, uh, where, where, where to load from memory. 
that value. And so we're going to hit return because now I've entered seven. And now let's go down to instruction two. We use the down arrow. So now I'm in, I'm in counter two. And now I want to do another load instruction. So I'm going to hit return. And we're going to put in a load instruction. And so that's another load instruction. It's the same one I had back on memory location zero. Let me go back to zero. See, that's the one I had for zero. And then go back to memory instruction two. There's my, my, my load on two. And where am I going to load this? Well, I'm going to load this from the left-hand side, which you can see in my program is going to be uh, memory location eight. So the, the next line here in memory location or counter three, I now need to enter in the value of eight. And so if you remember your binary, those of you who uh, maybe don't know binary, uh, binary goes like this. From the right-hand side, I'm counting my bits. And so this is the ones place, the twos place, the fours place the eights place, the 16, 32, 64, 128. So to load from eight, well, that's zero, zero. So this is the ones place, the twos place, the fours place, the eights place. And so if I hit space on that, that is the value of eight. And so I hit return on that. And now I need to go down to instruction four. So use the down arrow. Now do another load instruction. And so I'm going to do a load instruction that looks like that. And now I need to load from memory location nine. So go down one more. And this is now uh, instruction five or counter five. Hit return on that. Now I need to enter the value of nine. So again, if this is the ones place, the twos place, the fours place, the eights place, I need eight plus one is nine. And so I return on that. And now I've got nine entered in, in counter five. And counter six is the stop instruction, which is all zero. So I can just leave that be. And then counter seven. Well, this is now the memory locations that are not instructions. They're just memory. And so I need to insert uh, or light up all the right-hand lights. And so I hit enter on seven, counter seven. And let's go ahead and, and turn on all of these lights. And I'm going to hit return on that. And now I'll go down to instruction eight, counter eight. And I'm going to edit this one. I'm going to light up the left-hand side. I'm going to light these four up over here. I hit enter because I'm done doing that. And now we go down to instruction nine. I'm going to light them all up. So I'm going to hit enter. And I'm going to just light up, oops, all of the lights. And that's it. We can now run the program. Now, every time you do run, it'll actually always start the program from uh, counter zero. So let's go ahead and do R to run the program. And we'll actually watch it light up the accumulator. So pay attention to the accumulator line. And as we run it, it's going to load the value from memory location seven, which is going to light up all the lights on the right-hand side. And it's going to load the, the, the value from memory location eight, which is going to light up all the, the lights on the left-hand side. It's going to load the value from memory location nine, and it'll light up all the lights on the screen or on the accumulator at once. So I'm going to do R, and it starts with zero in the, in the accumulator, and now it's going to uh, load up all the right-hand side. It's going to load up all the left-hand side. Now it's going to load up all of them, and now the program is done. And now we've exited. And so that's the program, right? So let's run it one more time so we can actually follow along. You can actually see the delay built into the toy CPU so you can actually watch the program run. So I'm going to load from seven. I'm going to load from eight. I'm going to load from nine. And I'm going to stop the program. There we go. And now I've, I'm back to counter zero, which has the load instruction built into it. And so now that we know how to do that one, there's actually a, a better way, an easier way to write uh, to write a program that will light up all those uh, all those lights, and that is uh, to do it this way. We're going to use binary instructions. So I'm going to load all the lights that are on the right hand side, and then I'm going to do a not. I'm going to turn uh, that 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 uh, zero 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 one 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 one. I'm going to do a not on that. So every zero becomes a one and every one becomes a zero. And so that will turn it to one, 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 zero, 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 zero. Now, because I don't want to move, uh, you know, where my memory location is and things like that, it makes it a little bit easier to, uh, to not have to change things in the program. I'm going to just use a NOP instruction. That's where it ends up being easy to use this NOP. And then I'm going to do an OR 
from memory location seven. So what the OR does, if you remember what the OR instruction does, is it just takes two values and every time there's a, it just basically lines them up. And so every time you have a one in these two values, uh, then you get a one in the output. And so you can have a, a one and a one, and that will give you a one, or you can have a one and a zero. And because it's an or, well, it gives you a one, right? One and a zero or together will give you a one. And then the only time you don't get a one at the end is if they're both zero, right? Zero and zero uh, or together gives you a, gives you a zero. So uh, I want to use this program to actually light up the lights on the right-hand side, on the left-hand side, then all the lights together. By doing this, I don't actually need the last two instructions. So now my program is actually eight, eight bytes long, eight bytes long from zero to seven. So let's go ahead and uh, and now look at what that would look like. So if I were to look at what the uh, program looks like, uh, the uh, uh, this is what I have. So I'm going to do this uh, uh, instruction here from, uh, uh, from zero to seven. I'm just going to ignore the values that I have in my, in my program memory that's an eight and nine. So let's go ahead and bring my, uh, my toy CPU back up on screen. And now let's enter this program. So in memory location zero, I need to start with a load instruction. Well, I've already got a load instruction there, so I don't need to edit this one at all. And so now I go down to memory location one, counter one, and I need to load from memory location seven. Well, I've already got memory location seven in there, so I don't need to edit that. The next one I'm going to just do in memory location three, I'm sorry, memory location two, I need to enter the NOP instruction, right? So I'm going to enter the NOP instruction. So if I hit enter on this, now I can edit this. Now the NOP instruction, if we look at that little piece of paper tacked on the front of the toy CPU, the NOP instruction is a one followed by all zeros. And so that's my NOP instruction. Memory location three or counter three, I now need to give it the NOT instruction. And so this is a nice one because so we just hit enter and then we just uh, have these four bits be zero and then these four bits turned on. And that is the NOT instruction, right? See how it looks where you've got uh, uh, four zeros and four ones? Uh, it meant to imply that that's a NOT. All zeros become uh, ones. And so that's our NOT instruction in counter three and in counter four, uh, hit just the down arrow, go to instruction four. We're going to do an OR instruction. So we're going to hit return on this and now turn this load into an OR. And so that bit is still the same, but I need to turn this off and turn this on. And that should be the OR instruction. So it always helps when you do a program to write out the binary instructions so you're not having to do it kind of on the fly. And so there it is. That's instruction four is an OR instruction. And now I'm going to go down, hit enter on that, and it puts me back into input mode. And let's go down to uh, counter five. Counter five now needs to uh, be memory location seven instead of memory location nine. And so hit enter on this. I need to now change this to memory location seven. And so seven, that's binary seven, right? So again, remembering our binary, the ones place, the twos place, the fours place, the eights place, so one plus two plus four is seven, right? One plus two is three, plus four is seven. So uh, one, one, one is the binary value of seven. And so that's what I've got in instruction or counter uh, five and I'll hit enter there. And I go down to counter six and that needs to be the stop instruction which because I use NOP, now I don't have to change that, right? It's already stop, and so I'm good. And then uh, memory locate or counter seven, if I use the down arrow, uh, needs to be all the lights lit up on the right-hand side. Now, it doesn't matter what's in memory locations eight and nine because I'm never referencing memory locations eight and nine. So using the down arrow, you can see this is memory location eight, which we're not going to use. Uh, and then this is memory location nine, which we're not going to use. And so now let's go ahead and run this. And so what we should see again is it's going to load memory location seven. This is memory location seven. Uh, it's going to load into the accumulator the lights that are all lit on the right-hand side. And then it's going to do a not instruction. So it's going to flip those zeros to ones and those ones to zeros. So anything that's off will get turned on. Anything that's on will get turned off. 
and that will light up the lights on the left-hand side of the accumulator. And then it's going to do an OR, and that will basically uh, turn on all the lights in the accumulator because the, the lights on the left with an OR on all the lights on the right will turn on all of the lights on the accumulator. And so it's the same program we had before, but now we only had to do it with eight bytes instead of 10. So we'll go ahead and do R and this will run the program. We can actually watch it go. So it's going to load from seven and there it is on the right hand side. I'm going to now do a uh, not instruction. So it's going to flip the bits over and then I'm going to do an or uh, and that will now light up all the lights in the accumulator and now the program is done. Let's run it one more time. We can actually watch it run. So there it is. There load from every location seven. It's going to do a not and then it's going to do a not and then there's the not and then it's going to do an OR with uh, memory location seven, and it's going to then do all of our lights up here uh, and stop the program. And so that's how we're writing that program. Let's do another one. Uh, and so I've got another program in here where we're going to count down from a value. So we can count down from three. We're going to do three, two, one, zero. And so this one requires a little bit of working out some values. And so uh, I've, I'm, I want to load a value. All, all programs really start by loading a value. Uh, so I'm going to load a value into the accumulator. And then I'm going to test it. Is that value zero? Because if it's zero, I can, I can be done. So if it's zero, I'm going to just end the program. So if zero, jump to the end of the program. And so I need to write uh, a little uh, a green arrow there that kind of points to what the end of the program is. And that way I kind of keep track about what's where. And then uh, it's going to subtract. So if it's, if it's, uh, if it didn't, uh, if it wasn't zero, if the accumulator wasn't zero, then it's some other value. Uh, and it can only be the values of zero to 255. So I can now subtract one from that, whatever's in there. And I can't actually tell it to just subtract one. I actually have to tell it subtract a value that's stored in memory. So I need to store the memory one in, in memory somewhere. So uh, the, the value one is, uh, I, I need to keep a note in here that that's one, which ends up being a uh, place on, on uh, instruction 10. And then now that I've subtracted one, let's go back to the beginning to where we test if it's zero. So I'm gonna do a go to instruction and then I need to loop back to the beginning. And so I write a little, a little arrow there, a little orange arrow that kind of points back to the beginning of my loop. And that way I remember where everything is. And this is actually how I write instructions or how I write programs for the, uh, for the toy CPU is I actually have to write them all out. And I'm just gonna write a little placeholder for, I need to go to the end, I need to uh, load a start value, I need to subtract one. And so I'll just put words uh, in, uh, in, in parentheses there or, or, or in quotes to remind myself that that needs to come from somewhere else. And so as long as I've got those labels uh, written somewhere, uh, then I'm good. Now, if I were going to turn this into a program to run on the toy, I'm just going to go uh, look at my next slide here. So I'm going to count down from three to one zero. Uh, and that means that I need to start with a load instruction, right? That's what I've got written on a little piece of paper on the left-hand side, that orange, that yellow, yellow uh, piece of paper. Uh, I've, I wrote down the load instruction. So on the right-hand side, that's what the load instruction looks like. I need to load from a start value. And uh, as I wrote down on the left-hand side, the start value needs to be in on the uh, memory address nine. And so that's what I've got written there in binary. Just write it down for binary nine. And then I need to do a test, if zero. And so that's what the binary looks like on the right-hand side for an if zero, you're right. Again, you can look at that little card in the middle of the screen. I just reproduced what the card looks like. So you can actually remind yourself that that's what the if zero instruction looks like. And if it's zero, it needs to jump to the end of the program. And as I wrote down in my little uh, piece of paper on the left-hand side, you can see that the end of the instruction or the end of the program uh, is uh, at uh, memory location eight. And then it needs to do a subtraction. So there's my subtraction instruction on the right-hand side. And we're gonna subtract the value of one, which is stored in memory location 10. And then we're gonna go to back to the beginning of the loop, which was mem uh, counter two then we can stop. And then we have our two uh, variables at the end, one for the start value and one for the value of one. And so this program is 11 bytes long from zero to 10. So let's actually enter this into the toy. Let's actually watch it run. And so there's my toy and I'm in counter zero. 
and it already has the load instruction for me. So that's good. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to now enter in memory location nine for the uh, instruction one, right? So here it is with a value of seven. So now 90 changes to nine. And the value of nine is uh, the value of eight uh, plus one. And so that's what that is. One, two, four, and eight. And so eight plus one is nine. So now memory, a counter zero has the value of nine. I go down to the counter two, and now I'm going to do an if zero instruction. So if zero, hit return here. Let's enter this. If zero should look like uh, this. That's the if zero instruction. And then counter three, I need to pull from memory location eight. And so hit enter on that. And that is eight. And then memory location four, that's four. I need to do a subtraction. And so if I hit return on this, so I need to enter in, you can see on the right-hand side, it always helps to write down what your binary instructions are so that we can just very quickly enter them into the toy. And so that's the subtraction. We'll go down by one. And now I'm going to uh, subtract from the, uh, the value of one, which is stored in memory location 10. And 10 is eight plus two. So again, your binary is, this is one, two, four, and eight. So eight plus two is 10. And now memory location six, counter six, now needs to have a go-to instruction. Well, before this was the end of my program. So now I need to actually enter the go-to instruction, which looks like that. And then I need to go to the value or go to memory uh, counter two. And so now I need to change this value here to two looks like that. And then after that, uh, counter eight needs to be the stop instruction because that's the end of my program. And now memory locations nine and 10 have the start value and then the value of one. So I can subtract one from my value. So hit enter on, on, uh, on well, that's, that's the stop. So I need to go down one, this is nine. And now I need to enter the start value of three. And so this is one, and two, that's three, hit enter on that. Now I've entered three into counter nine and then counter 10 needs to have the value of one. And so now if I run this program, if I've entered everything incorrectly, now I can run my program and you can see that it, it starts with zero. Uh, it's now loaded in uh, the value of three and then it's going to subtract one and now I'm two. And then it's going to check if it's zero and it's not. So it'll keep going. Let's now subtract one again. And once it's subtracted one, now we go down to one and it's going to check, okay, is this, is this zero? It's not zero. So it's going to keep doing the loop and subtract one again. And now it gets us down to zero. And now it's going to jump back to the beginning of the loop and test if it's zero. And if it is, it is. And now it's going to jump to the end of the program. And now we're done. There we go. And that is counting down three, two, one, zero. And this was a program that my students were actually able to enter. Once they saw how to enter a program, it took them a little while to kind of get their, their, their own first program, but they were actually able to do it. Uh, and it was really neat to watch these, these students who are not going to be computer science students, be able to write a program for a, uh, a lights, a switches and lights uh, model of a computer. Let's let's go and look at another one here. So let's move a light from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. This is a very simple operation using shift. And so I'm going to load a starting value. You can see uh, instruction eight is my starting value, just the, the value on the left-hand side. And then it's going to uh, test if that's zero, right? Because if it's zero, we're done. And so it's going to, if it's zero, it will jump to the end of the program. And then uh, uh, it's it's, if it's not zero, then we need to shift that light off to the right-hand side by one. So we're going to do the right instruction. Right doesn't take an argument. It just shifts the bits off to the right by one. And if they roll off the right-hand side, then, it's, then they're lost. And then we're going to jump back to the beginning of the loop. And then the instruction seven is where the program can actually end. And then instruction or counter eight is has the value that we're starting with. And so looking at... Uh, turning that into a program, I only need instructions zero through eight. This is a nine byte program. And so let's go ahead and enter that into the toy. 
And so I'm going to start on counter zero and I'm going to load. There's my load instructions already there. And now I'm going to go down by one. Let's go to counter one. I need to load from memory location eight. So it changes to an eight. And now uh, counter two needs to be the test if something is zero. And this is already the if zero instruction. You can see it's zero, 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 one, one, zero, zero, one, right? That's the if zero instruction. You can always tell uh, because it's on a little card in the front of the, of the toy CPU, but I also have written it out in binary in the right-hand side. So I know that that counter two has the if zero instruction, go down to counter three, and this needs to be the instruction uh, that is the end of the program. It's where the stop instruction lives. And that is going to be, uh, so that is, uh, I'm on three, and this needs to be the value of seven. And so I'm going to turn that off and turn these on. And that is now the binary value of seven. And now let's go down one. We can go to counter four, and this needs to be the right shift instruction. Shift all the bytes in there uh, over, to, uh, over by one. So we're going to turn this off, and that is now the right instruction. Hit enter on that to submit it, and then go down one. And now this is instruction five, and this needs to be the go-to instruction. So we're going to hit uh, enter to edit this. And so these two lights and that one off, that should be the go-to instruction. And then uh, submit that and then go down by one. This will now be uh, counter six. That now needs to have the value of two because that is going to go back to instruction two on my program. So let's go ahead and enter the value of two. And uh, let's go then to uh, uh, in counter seven. So we use the down arrow and that brings me down to counter seven. And this needs to be the stop instruction. So I'm gonna hit enter here and turn off this bit. And that now means that my program has stopped. And then uh, eight is where we need to have the start value. Now it, it does take a while uh, to run this program and actually watch the light move all the way from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. Uh, for, so for simplicity, just to kind of speed up the demo a little bit, uh, let's start the bit right there. We're going to start the light right there. And we're going to watch it go from that end to the right, and then it'll disappear, and then the program will end. Now it doesn't matter what I have in instructions after that. So this is eight. Uh, and then nine has some garbage value in it, but I don't care because my program never gets there. So let's go ahead and run this program. So again, what it's going to do is going to start with this value here from uh, memory location eight. And it's going to light up that light uh, that's uh, the fourth one from the right. And it's going to load that into the accumulator. And then it's going to keep moving that light to the right by one until it gets to the value of one and then right shift one and that'll be the value of zero and then the program will end. So basically it's the same as moving that light uh, to the right hand side. So we're gonna just run R and now it's gonna load the value, there it is. And now it's gonna uh, do various uh, comparisons if zero and then it's gonna do a right shift which it just did. And let's go back to the beginning, it did a test if it's zero and it's not. So we're gonna do a right shift and there it is. And they're going to go back to the beginning and we're going to test if it's zero. And if it's not, then we'll do a right shift and that's going to move it off by one. And let's go back to the beginning of the loop and it's going to test if it's zero. And if it's not, it's going to uh, then do a right shift. There it is. Now it's zero. Let's go back to the beginning of the loop. It's testing if it's zero and it is. And now it's going to jump to the end of the program, which has a stop instruction. And there it is. So that is a program that will just move a light from the left-hand side over to the right. And I think we have time for one more program. So let's go and do one more program here. We're going to add the value one and two, and we're going to store it in another location. So this is, again, something I had my students do. So that way they would have a basic understanding of how computers are, are working, how you program a computer, a very simple computer using a switches and lights model. And uh, so I'm going to load a value into memory. I need to load my first value. And then I'm going to add uh, to the accumulator uh, some other value, my second value, also stored from memory. And then the accumulator will now be the sum of the first and second numbers. And now I need to store that in memory somewhere else. And so I need to do a store instruction, store that sum somewhere else. 
and then I can stop the program. A very simple program. And it needs three uh, variables just to uh, store values. One is going to need to have one variable that is going to store the value. The first number we need to add, we'll put in the number one. And then the second number it needs to add, we'll put in the number two. And then another place for it to store the result. Now you can actually watch the accumulator change. We can actually go back later to see if the accumulator has changed. Uh, and uh, so we're going to put in just a garbage value here of all the lights are on so that we can actually see it be uh, one plus two will be three. We actually should see the value of three in there when we're done. So let's use that little card in the front of the uh, toy CPU to actually figure out what our instructions need to look like. So we need to start with the load instruction. And we're going to load from, uh, now we've kind of figured it out by writing on the left-hand side, and that little, that little sticky note, that little, that's to look like a little sticky note. By writing out our program first, we can actually figure out that the first instruction or the first number it needs to pull from is going to be on instruction seven or counter seven. So we're doing on the right-hand side, we're doing a load from memory location seven. And then we're going to add to the accumulator what is in memory location eight. It turns out that's our second number is memory location eight. And then we're going to take that value, we're going to copy that value, we're going to store it into memory somewhere. And so we're going to use the store instruction and put that into the place we reserved for that, which is memory location nine. And then once we've done that, we're going to stop the program and then we're done. So this is another 10 byte program uh, from zero to nine. And by the way, I've, I've borrowed all of these, uh, many of these instructions from Brian Kernahan's uh, toy, and that was able to use uh, the uh, uh, Brian Kernahan's toy after I, I showed my, my students the toy uh, CPU. So let's go ahead and enter this add one plus two and store it in a variable. And so I'm going to now uh, start at zero, counter zero, which is a load of variable or load of value. And that's already got the load instruction on. So I'm going to go down by one to memory location uh, counters, counter one, which now needs to have a value of seven. So I hit enter here. And now let's turn that to binary value of seven. And then I'm going to go down one more. So counter two, we're going to do the add instruction. So let's hit enter on this and edit this to be the add instruction. Now I've already written on the right-hand side what add needs to look like. And so add looks like that. That's the add instruction. And so I'm done with that. And now I need to add from what variable or what what uh, what place in memory. So counter three has the uh, location of memory we need to pull from, and that is memory location eight. And so that is the binary value of eight. And then uh, counter four now needs to store that somewhere. So now we need to give it the store instruction, which we haven't used yet. So this is the store instruction. And where is it going to store it? Well, uh, the next instruction here, instruction five, counter five, is going to have the memory location that we need to store that in, which is the memory value, uh, memory location of nine. And then the next instruction, instruction six, needs to be the stop instruction. So I need to turn off that one bit that's already set. And now I'm at stop instruction. And then I go down one more. And now I've got memory location seven. It's my first number I want to add. And I'm going to make that the value of one. And then memory location eight. I'm going to add the second number. Let's let's make it a nice number we can count, count on, which is number two. And now one plus two will be three, but we're going to store it over here in memory location nine. And just so we can see where things, how things get changed, let's actually change all these lights to ones, the value of 255. And so that's memory location nine. Hit enter on that. And now let's run the program. So again, you can see on the right-hand side what, what's going to be happening. It's going to load a value from memory location seven. That's the value of one. It's going to then add to the accumulator uh, what's stored in memory location uh, uh, eight, which is the value of two. And so that will give change the accumulator to the value of three. And then we're going to use the store instruction to store that somewhere. We're going to store it in memory location nine, which is what we've got on screen right now. And then it's going to stop. So when we're done with the program, we can go back to memory instruction nine and we will. We can actually see that we've changed the value from 255 to three. So we're R to run the program. And so now it's going to load, and there's our value. And it's going to add, and that's now it's three, and now it's going to store, and now it's going to store it, and, and now the program is done. And so now if I use the uh, 
up and down keys. You can actually go down to, this is zero, counter one, counter two, counter three, counter four, counter five, six, seven, eight, nine. And nine is now the value of three. We actually were able to modify the contents of memory. And so this is another program that my students were able to uh, write. Now, again, they're not going to become computer science students, so they don't need to be experts in how uh, computers work, but they need to have a basic understanding about how programs work. And now, now they have the, sort of the grounding of how we would program computers using sort of a switches and lights model. Now it became much easier for them to now see why we had uh, programming languages that were higher level, like C, Fortran, uh, things like that. And so we were then able to carry this forward and talk about other programming languages. So this is the same program, add one plus two and store it in another variable uh, written in the C programming language and the Fortran 77 programming language, right? So if you were a C programmer, you know that you're going to start a function called main, and then we're going to uh, take the uh, define a variable called sum, and we're going to just use the, the we're going to add one plus two, and we're going to store it in that variable called sum, and then we're going to, in this case, print it back out to the user. So by these other programming languages, we can actually now have things like displaying things to the screen, and so that prints out one plus two equals three that's the value of the sum variable, and then it returns back the operating system. Or if you're a Fortran programmer, on the right-hand side, we're going to define a program called add, and it's going to define a variable called sum, and it's going to add the value, add the numbers of one and two and store it in the variable called sum. It's going to print out then the results one plus two equals three. And so by starting with sort of the switches and lights model, uh, my students then understood at a basic level how computers operated. They're not using disk interfaces and uh, screen and, and things like that. They're not querying the keyboard and, and other types of interrupts. It's just a very basic minimal instruction set computer that teaches them the basics on how a very simple computer might operate. And once they have that understanding, then they were able to carry that forward to then understand why we built other programming languages and why those other programming languages are so much easier for programmers to use. And so that is uh, why I created the Toy CPU and just a couple of programs you can use in the Toy CPU. I'm sure now that you've seen some demonstrations about how to write uh, programs in the Toy CPU, you can write your own. Uh, and uh, I would encourage you to go ahead and do that. So the, again, on the screen, on the, you can see the uh, the URL to download the Toy CPU at github.com slash Fridas project slash Toy CPU. If you have questions after this conference is over, uh, you can certainly feel free to email me at jhall at freedos.org. Uh, otherwise, I think we're going to do a Q&A now, and I'll be happy to, uh, uh, hopefully I'm going to be on the chat and I can answer your questions there. All right, so thank you very much for attending this talk on uh, how to use the toy uh, CPU emulator to uh, learn 8-bit programming. Thanks very much, and thanks for joining uh, FOSDEM.